Um, and so the, I got the privilege, uh, before we jump in fully the word this morning, I got the privilege to, uh, this uh, last couple of days to go work in the heat, getting some stuff ready uh, for deer season. How many of you know, um, and you're like, oh, I don't like deer season. Well, that's okay. I do. And, um, and, and one of the things about it is, is uh, every year we get deer. Not because uh, we just go show up one day, but because of what's done beforehand. And so for three days, uh, I say Thursday afternoon, evening rather, uh, and then all day yesterday or Friday and all day uh, Saturday with more than enough heat that you can't even ex experience. We set up deer stands and we trim lanes and got ticks everywhere. So if you see me itching today in the certain places, it, it just, it's just the tick, you know, a bite. Um, but that was about getting a harvest. So this morning I got up real early this morning and I walked out to my garden and I picked about 10 or 15 of these. And um, I, I buried them in some weeds so I didn't have to carry them to the house because it was really early and I was like, I need to get back in, inside. And uh, how many know what this is? Watermelon. watermelon. Um, anybody see this watermelon think, dang, that looks good. I would like to have that. Anybody? Maybe? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> As I was out there getting ready uh, for today, the message, um, I, I was I had noticed not only there was watermelons, but there was there was uh, places in my garden. I have some chickens, and the, some of the watermelons had um, had been picked open. You know, they busted open from from the rain or from the heat or whatever, and the chickens had pecked them. You know, and ate them. And I was like, why in the world? Why in the world would these chickens eat my watermelons? And you know what they said? Because Sorry. But that wasn't the spiritual reason that I was going to tell you about. But really, because they did. That's why they ate them, because. Um, but really, that, that, that were, there, were, there were chicken water, uh, watermelons that were busted open from chickens. And, uh, and anyway, so I picked one of these, and, and I was thinking about it, and here we're going to sit today, and I'm going to open this morning's message um, by giving you a watermelon. You know, in our day and age, if I said, who wants a watermelon, everybody would say, oh, yeah. And you know what we want? We want this. But right here in my hand, I cut open another one of these this morning at the house, and I brought six seeds. And these seeds right here can produce an endless amount. There's a lot of seeds in there. But each one of these seeds I, I, I took from the biggest watermelon at the house big, um, to save for the next year. And when I bought these watermelons, granted, they got kind of overtaken with uh, weeds this year being gone for during the summer and whatnot. But these are probably some of the best watermelons I've ever had. And when I did some research, I bought some seeds. I bought 20 seeds for $35. 20 seeds for $35. That's one of the melons. Um, it's not my biggest melon, but it's a good one. How many of you would want a melon. I want, we're going to, today we're going to talk about Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. And a lot of times we come together and we want to be healed. We want a watermelon. But do you want, do you want an endless supply? Yes. Do I want to end the supply? Because if I tend this seed and this is why we're coming together. It, 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 our, our society and churches have become very much drive through McDonald's. I want the watermelon. And I said, if you want a watermelon, like this is $250 right here. I mean, this is, this is value. This is value. I, I, I have in my, in my pocket, I have 10 bucks in seeds, which is significant, but really... An endless supply, if it's tended to. And, um, and the Bible tells us in Mark 4 that if you don't understand that, you're not going to get anything. That's right. Everything comes from that. That's right. And so, um, anyway, this watermelon, so that today as we're going through the word, I'm not going to just give you a watermelon. I'm going to give you a seed, because see, here's the deal. If you, if you learn uh, the value of this seed that you hear, it'll change your life. Listen. 
And then, then it'll be, have the ability to where you grow it. And now, just like I had only 20 seeds, now I got a pocket full and I got melons full. And then why I gather here and why you're here is not just so that you can have some melon, but you can take it to the place and be, bring refreshing and that out of your bellies would flow, flow rivers of living water. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. And so that's how we're going we're gonna to approach this today. And uh, the title of this morning's message is Jehovah Rapha. But we're going to go back in. Honey, where were you at? Oh, there you are. She had given me some canned deer meat not too long ago. Um, and so I thought, you know, I'm going to give you a melon. How about that? Will you pass that down to her? That'd be great. Get it out of my hands. I'll kick it off the stage. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, that canned deer meat, I, I have to say, when I first looked at it, I was like, no way. I'm not going to eat that. And then uh, I'm just saying, you know how it looks kind of goofy? And then it actually tastes just like roast beef. Anyway, um, pretty cool. All right, you ready to get in the Word this morning? Amen. Enough stories. Stories are fun, though, aren't they? Got signed out. Here we go. Signed back in. I don't know how that happened. Uh-oh. Enter password. This is not good. Uh, for inch, uh, let's see here. Hold on one sec. I think I got my password. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think so. Hold on, hold on. I think I got it. Uh, hold on, hold on. You, see, oh, you messed me up. I think I got it. Shoot. Stink. Here, you do it. Huh? Gary Bat's word. Uh, oh, you should listen to your wife. I should listen. Okay, so there is a word of the Lord that came to me one time um, when I first moved here uh, back in 2003, sitting over on this front row, and this missionary guy came in that never knew from Adam, never knew me. He showed up. I was on a Wednesday night. He showed up, service started at 7, he showed up at 7.15 and walked in. I was standing at the back door, brought him up front. He started teaching, middle of the service. He said, what's your name, son? The Lord wants you to know the time is now, the place is here. It was a word of the Lord for our lives, very clear. We felt like we were supposed to move here, um, but, but her parents were here, and I didn't want to follow her parents, and um, that's a re the reality. How many of you know it's not always the easiest to follow the Lord? Um, there were some things going on between her parents and my parents or some things that had happened. And, and so I just didn't want to be disloyal to my parents, my family, you know, and, um, and I just felt like that would be a, just a, it kind of could look that way, even though it wasn't in my heart. And I needed a word from the Lord. Um, the, the highest way to be led though, is not by a word of the Lord from a minister, but by the word of God. This is why we were talking about that seed. But anyway, he called, he, he said, what's your name? Like middle of walking over this, what's your name? Like where Austin was, what's your name, son? I'm like, Nate, he goes, stand up. And he said, the Lord wants you to know the time is now, the place is here. Turns to walk away again. He goes, and another thing, your wife does hear from the Lord. Anyway. <laughs> and I had to hear that because her parents were here, and I'm like, we're a year and a half in married, and I'm like, you know, I feel like we're supposed to. Yeah, because your mom and dad are here. Forget that, you know. Um, anyway, praise the Lord. So. Thank you, Lord. And my computer's working, and I could have just taught it from my heart, but um, I had actually asked the Lord this morning uh, as we were getting ready, let me teach, and anoint me to teach this morning more than preach. And a lot of times, I'll just flow out of my heart, right? Um, but I felt like it was important that we would lay some, lay some things down, and we're in this series called I Am. And so I wanted to go through kind of some of the stuff where we've been, but just hit some of the high points along the way that's going to lead us into where we're at right now. Um, and so we, we had talked about Jesus who when we're talking about I am and recognizing that he is God. And then last week we talked about Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides or the Lord who sees. He sees and he provides where you can't. And we had mentioned this, and I don't know um, if you remember this, so I'm going to re reiterate that, that Jehovah Jireh is not like all over in the word. It's only in that place where Abraham offers his son Isaac and the Lord provides. Because that's, a, that's, that's what you and I have to know. That's, it's, it's, it's a, yet it says it everywhere, but it says right there, you'll see it all through, the, all through 
the Bible, but you'll see that word right there one time, and he's making this declaration that the Lord is the provision for everything. This is way back in Genesis. And we have to establish that. And we talked about learning to look and learning to see that so that we would believe that. And we don't look with these eyes, we look with these eyes, right? And so we talked about how you need to look with the eyes of your heart. Ephesians chapter 1, this is why we pray this over ourselves and we pray it over people. Paul prayed it over the church at Ephesus. He said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding or the eyes of your heart be enlightened and you would know the hope or the picture to which he's called you. So God wants you and I to see the picture, the hope to which he's called us because that right there allows you and I to, to man, I'll tell you, to not only stand and stay in that place of faith, but be in the place of expecting good things, Amen. Right? Um, and be there. The Bible talks about how you have need of perseverance, right, and, and patience so that you could inherit the promise. Like there's, it's like so many times it's like I plant the seed and it pops up and I'm like, ah, oh, forget it. It's not working. It's just vines, just greens. Where's the fruit? We'll give it a little longer. Yeah. Not too long ago, I, I went over to a kid, little boy's house. Um, he was really, he came up to me after church one day uh, about watermelons. This is a true story this year. I mean, this doesn't happen every year, but it happened this year. And uh, he, was listen, he was asking me about watermelons because he loves watermelons. He's always wanted to grow a watermelon, right? And so I was like, well, it's, uh, it's end of June, and uh, we probably still have time to get some watermelons in the ground. And uh, he said, like, really? I said, yeah. And so I said, tell you what. I'll, I'll meet you at your house sometime this week. I'll text your mom and I'll, I'll come over. So I get some potting soil. I get some seeds. Um, I, don't, I only took one. I took one of my good plants um, from the ground. And, uh, and then I got a couple from Lowe's and I got some seeds. Went over there and he said he had a spot for a garden. And, um, and he had been hoeing it. And I hoed this, this spot. And Oh, my gosh. Anyway, we got it ready. We planted these seeds. And I get a text about two weeks ago. And they had picked a watermelon. About this big. But it was green on the inside. And they asked the question, um, it was big. How do you know, they text me, how do you know when it's right? And they said, well, somebody else told them when the leaves turn brown. Good, 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 you know, somebody told me that God doesn't want to heal. Somebody told me. That watermelon wasn't what it was supposed to be. I guess it's not God's will. I guess those watermelon seeds weren't, that, weren't the right kind. I guess it wasn't. Or maybe there was just needing to be a little more patience. And the Bible talks about how if you have faith and patience, you'll inherit. And so we need to have patience. But patience is only possible when you, you and I understand that the order got turned in. You know, when you're at the restaurant... And, and, and you had talked to the waitress, and the waitress, you know, you say, hey, I'll have the ribeye and whatever. And then she comes back by, and she brings you some more bread. She's very attentive. And you got your salad. She's refilling the waters. And she goes, hey, I just want you to know, I, I really turned the order in at the beginning. I didn't just turn it in, and it's almost out, right? And it's okay for you and I to wait because you know that the order's turned in. So patience. So now you have this picture like, whew, I'm ready. I'm ready for my, my meal. Right. And it allows you to wait. Otherwise, you can just be like, forget it. I'm just I'm done. And you got your appetizers. You got your drinks. You got your salads like we're done when you can walk out. You know, you can leave your your I'll just take my bill now. I'm good. But really, you're not. You leave dissatisfied. Isn't that the truth? When there's a picture of a promise or when there's a promise that you've heard that God is something and then you leave beforehand, do you kind of do anybody ever get dissatisfied? Yeah. So anyway, so we're going to teach this morning, and I believe it's going to be really a blessing to you. Um, so let's, let's go. I'm going to cruise through some scriptures, um, not, not, not dishonoring, but just uh, laying them out there. Uh, Brad, there's a few scriptures I added later in the game, um, but here we go. And, I, and if, if you don't make them up there, I'm not really slowing down, all right? Exodus 3, 13 through 15 and again, we're talking in this series, this series is called I Am. We're talking about the names of God. And this is when, um, when, when Moses met uh, the Lord in the burning bush in the wilderness. And God was wanting to deliver his people. 
And let's just go ahead and pick up here. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites. So God's talking to him out of the burning bush. Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. I will be, I will be who I will be. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Asia, Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. We talked about this in the first week. You have different names of God. In what we see in our English Bibles, we see God, we see Lord, we, we, see, uh, we see God. But it's Elohim or it's Yahweh or it's El Shaddai, right? It's all these different names that were, would be in, in the Hebrew, um, different, different words. And so it would bring context and understanding to us when we would read. But here in our English, it's God or Lord. Well, here this is the first place. Well, really, that's not the first place. This is where he declares, God declares, that I will be, I will be Yahweh or what we call Jehovah now. I will be the existing one, the covenant-keeping God. This is who I will be to you, to them, and for generations to come. Go tell them that the, the one who will be, the one who is and who will be, and it's a covenant-keeping God, I will be this to you. I will be this to you. I will be uh, he said, that's who you're to tell him. And then what you see is from this place, you see that he, he begins to reveal who he is, who he's going to be, and who he is to, to the children of God or to those of faith. It's interesting where Jehovah or Yahweh Yaira, which is the Lord who sees, is pre, pre God finding or having the children of Israel. It was in Abraham. It was in Abraham. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, or Yahweh, Yah, Yahweh, Yah, which is where the Lord sees. He's talking back to, to Abraham, back in Genesis, early Genesis. And let's, let's keep looking here. Um, John 5, 8, 58. I love this. Jesus said this. He said, John, again, John 5, 58. He says, Verily, truly, I say unto you, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was, I am. So he's saying, Jesus is saying, we, this is important for us to note we talked about this on week one, is that Jesus is I am. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, we pray in the name of the King of kings, the Lord of the Lord, the Lord Almighty, all of those things, we looked at those names. we got to remember that. And so it's not just in Jesus' name, in a dishonoring thing. And it matters what you call Jesus. You remember Peter was asked, uh, all the disciples were asked, who do you say that I am? And what did he say? He said, you're the Christ. And he said, blessed are you, because flesh and blood didn't reveal this, but my Father revealed it to you, right? So this is important. That was Matthew 16, uh, verses 15 through 17. So these things, th those are important. But let's just go back to what we're going to talk about. Again, I am, or we're going to talk, we're talking about it. who is I am, or who is this covenant-keeping God, or who is the God that will be? Who is he? Where does it start? Where does all these things originate? Maybe you've heard about the Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, or Jehovah Nisi, your victory, or Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, or Jehovah Sitkanu, your righteousness. We have these different names. We'll throw those up so you can kind of put a mental picture with the word as we later on this morning. But where did it really start? It all starts here, Genesis 22, 7 through 8. And this is last week's message. I'm going to actually read actually through uh, verse uh, 13, 7 through 14 rather. Uh, <clears throat> the Lord himself will provide. This is Isaac saying, hey, Daddy, um, I see that we have wood. I see that we have fire. I see we got the knife, the, the, co the covenant knife, the knife that we would use to sacrifice a lamb. Um, but he said, Isaac spoke up, verse 7, and he said to his father, Abraham, yes, my son, Abraham, the fire, the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb. Somebody better underline that circle that God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Verse 9, when they arrived at the place God has, has, had designated, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. Let me just pause real quick. There's, there's so much in here, but that just seemed to highlight when I just read that. When they went to the place the Lord had designated, 
let me tell you, if you want to go where you want to go and do what you want to do and do what, what feels right to you, instead of finding out what the Lord has said to you, I mean, this is what everything, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. Ask him, get peace, let him lead you, and then settle in your heart, that's where we're going. Yeah. If he would have went to some other mountain, there wouldn't have been a ram there. And sometimes we wonder where, why we're in places and famine. We're like, well, I'm just going to do this because this is what I want to do. Well, ask the Lord. So when they arrived at the place that God has designated, verse 9, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar and topped the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. The Lord, per- <clears throat> okay, just then, verse 11, An angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he said. He said, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld even your only son from me. Verse 13, then Abraham looked up and he saw uh, behind him a ram in a thicket caught by its horns. So he went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in the place of his son. In the place of his son. So you see that there is a substitution that happened here that day. That substitution was, was a man, a son, a child, you and me. This is what this represents, all the way back in Genesis. It represents there was, a, there was you or me up there. And God provided for himself a what? A lamb, to, a substitute to pay the price. And the Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. And so we see this picture that, that Jesus of Jesus when John the Baptist said, Look, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So there's this picture of substitution. That's what happened. That's what happened when Jesus paid the price on the cross. This picture right here. And in this place, in this place, here's what he said. Abraham, he took and offered the burnt offering and is put to, uh, in the place of his son. Verse 14, and Abraham called this place, the Lord will provide. So to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. This is where it all starts, right here. This is even what the Bible is about. We've talked about this before. Like, are there, is there all other ancient literature that is, uh, that's true? Yeah, probably. There, there's all kinds of things. There's the Maccabees. There's all, but there is, of the Christian faith, there is one book. And it's called the Bible. And it's interesting, from the beginning of creation, Genesis chapter 1 through, when, when, I don't know, maybe 15, 12 maybe, when God, God finds, Abraham finds a, finds a man, all of the book is about God finding a man so that he can bring his will back on the earth. Abraham and the stories of the sons to bring a Messiah to, or the Lamb to pay the price for you and me. This is what this book's about. And this is what Christian faith is about. Right? If you want to study world history, go look through world history and look at somebody's account of world history. But that right there is the, the inspired word of God that was preserved and kept by God but no, without mistakes and prophecy to where prophecy upon prophecy upon prophecy. It's impossible. It's not just improbable, but it's impossible to have written and, and foretold as many prophecies that have been fulfilled and are still being fulfilled. And this, this is the Holy Bible. It's not the Bible. It's the Holy Bible. It's set apart, holy, set apart by who? By God. You know how many times it's been tried to be destroyed? I don't even know that that's English. It's been tried anyway. But you understood it, didn't you? All right. So this is where it all starts. Back here, he shows this picture of a lamb. God's going to provide for himself. And it's the Lord sees to it, and he provides. He sees to it, and he provides where you can't. What is that? Your righteousness. My righteousness is like filthy rags. I can't provide. Okay? And that was the purpose of the law. All right, now let's keep going here. John 3, 16 through 17. This is I'm just trying to lay line upon line. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save the world through him. John 3, 16 and 17. This is that same picture of what you just read in Genesis chapter 22. That there was a a replacement. There wasn't a condemnation. Jesus didn't come to tell you all the things that you didn't do. He came to take what you and I couldn't do upon him so that we could be saved. This is the heart of the Father. He wants salvation to you and me. Let's keep looking here uh, this morning. Because it's important for us to note that salvation is more than eternal security. 
I'm going to say that again. It's important to note that salvation is more than eternal security. It is God's favor and face turned towards you and me. You know, there used to be a time that the priests would proclaim, uh, they would proclaim this is found, excuse me, in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. And I've, I've, I've said this many times. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you. That's all the way to verse 26. The Lord, lift up, uh, the Lord lift up his face. Verse 25. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. This is a, was a, a declaration spoken by the priest to the people. Now a priest was a stand between between the people and God. He was the performer of the blood sacrifice where without the blood sacrifice, there would be no forgiveness of sins. So he was the go-between. You know who else is the go-between? Jesus. Jesus was. And so at the time of a sacrifice, at the time of where people's sins were forgiven, the priest would lift his voice and he would say, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. So let me just think about it like this. When a payment's been paid and the blood has been applied on the mercy seat, where it's a mercy seat instead of a judgment seat, if, there's no, if, if, you, put, if you are judged, it's like the seat of God, where if there's no blood, it's not mercy, it's judgment. So the, ju- the blood makes it to where you and I get mercy instead of judgment. So now he's, there's this declaration to, to the people that the Lord, Lord be kind to you. The Lord be favorable to you. Let me say it this way. The Lord look at you and let his face to shine upon you. That means when he looks at you, he looks like, like happy. He looks at you like with joy and he's looking and he's looking. He's the one who sees and he wants to provide. He's looking. This is the, this is, but this is what Jesus did and he says every day. This is salvation right here. The Lord, so whatever you're going through, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. So is it too hard for him? Is it too big for him? This is salvation. No, it's not too big for him. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Think about if you know that God is willing and for you in that situation or this situation or or when you're wherever you're at. This is important. And this is why it's important for us to hear the word this morning. Because so many times what, what people want is they say, come pray for me. When the right thing that should be said is teach me teach me tell me show me in the word so that I myself could hold faith because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God if I don't have a word of God from some for on something then I have no faith and if I have no faith, I have no victory. The Bible tells us in 1 John 5, 4, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So it's so important that I wouldn't just pray for you. And that you wouldn't just, I mean, listen, we pray for people, don't get me wrong. But what would be better is that you would hold it for yourself and so that you could be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So that when you come into a situation and pastor's not there or mama's not there or grandma's not there and you come into a situation, you can believe God is in the situation. That's right. This is important. Yeah. These things, this is, how is it that salvation is appropriated in your life? Romans 10, 17. How was it? That if you believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you be saved. So there's something important about you believing in your heart. So if I pray for you and you don't believe in your heart, what did it do for you? There's no salvation. And that salvation is more than just eternal security. Salvation is and is God's face turned towards you, shining towards you, blessing you, keeping you. This is this is salvation. And so when his face is towards you, and whose face? His face. Who is he? We're looking at this in the names of God. The, he's looking at you, and, but it's important that you and I know who he is because otherwise I can't believe in my heart who he is and therefore confess with my mouth the same way you receive all of who God is and what salvation has afforded or provided through the... Because the Bible tells us by one man's sin, death entered. 
so too through one man's sin, or one man, one man Jesus Christ, righteousness should, should reign. Okay, so these are important things that you don't just, don't just have somebody pray for me, but teach me. Show me the word. Wow. And you know what's amazing is, if you'll look, and we could, in this, in, on this last Wednesday and for the next, I don't know, maybe 10 Wednesdays, I don't know how long it'll be, we're teaching on healing. And, um, man, there's been so much uh, talk, uh, in, in, not just in the body of Christ, but just in the world, concerning what God's will and people, people recount and, and, and say what God's will is, and yet they haven't even been tra- they haven't even surrendered their will to God's will. And even if your will is surrendered to God's will and you're born again, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be, this is Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, but do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you could do what? Let me, I'm just jumping through all the way to the end. So that you could approve or you could test or you could show proof of God's will. So God's will in your and my life takes you and me having a conformed mind. No, a transformed mind. And what's happened is pressures, pressures conform us. And this is what he's saying. There's so many things and pressures in this world that are causing you and me to think a certain way. And God said, I don't want it that way. I want, you, I want to give you my word. I, I, want, I want to give you my word. And the word became flesh, John chapter 1, and dwelt among us, Jesus. I want to give you my word. And you could look at God himself. Jesus is God. Before Abraham I was, I am. You can look at him and you can see who he is and his will for your and my life. So I'm not conformed to this world, but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind as I see who Jesus is. He is the word. When I see Jesus, I see God. I see his will for my life. And if only from that place can you and me prove God's will. What's God's will? Jesus And this is where we talk about, just more recently, it's not what would Jesus do, it's what did Jesus do. How did Jesus act? This is who God is, this is who he is for you. Prove it. Prove it. He says, when when this happens, you can now prove it. You can actually show forth or bring to light the will of God. And this is what's so important for the body of Christ, to bring forth and to show forth the will of God. So many times we're not seeing the will of God in the earth, in the church, because we think like the world. We look with these eyes instead of these eyes. The Bible said, and what, uh, this is the, it's the most, this is one of the most um, strategic ploys of the enemy, and that is this. This is a burden to have to read. This is a burden. I'm busy. Do I have to? I get nothing out of this. It's hard to understand. This is, well, well, why? Why is is this one of the biggest ploys of the enemy to to the church? Because as long as this isn't before you, you're not being changed. And as long as you're not changed, guess what? You think like the world. And as long as you think like the world, you look like the world. And as long as you look like the world, then there's no difference between you and them other than in your heart an eternal hold or, or eternal security. But here on this earth, so you know what? You have no advertising. You know what you aren't? Salty. You know what we are? Not you. I'm talking we, us. You know, you understand. I'm not talking to. So it's important that because this transforms me. It not only transforms me, actually the Bible even tells me that his words were like life to me and I did eat them. It actually restores my soul and, and heals my body. Like you go, go do a word search in the Bible and see how, how this actually heals your soul and even heals your body. So when, when death entered, when death entered by one man's sin, Adam, uh, the Bible says sin and death entered, When Jesus paid the price, he restored all that back. It's important. This is the foundational teaching is that you and I are created in the image and likeness of God. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And so what what Christ did on the cross, the same way that Adam died, he died three ways. Well, you've been raised to life three ways. And it's called this right here, the Word of God, that allows you and me to receive 
Because everything, salvation, is by grace through faith. And this is why it's so important. This is why Satan is after the word. Mark chapter 4, verse 13. If you don't understand this, you understand nothing. Satan's after the word. He's after the word. And this is why, you know, you open this up and you can just get one piece of the word and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. But just get, get some of it. Get something. And this is also why it's, it's um, a tragedy for, for the church to have moved into a place to please the crowds and to say we can only go this long and what, whatever because, you, know, you know, those kids back there. and Listen, we have a serve team. And hopefully you're on it. But like, it, sir, like when we have kids in the back, I under, 100% understand that there's children being taught the word of God. And I also understand that their, their, rear, like their bottoms and, and attention can only handle so much. So we provide, try to provide uh, fun things in the midst of it so that what? So that here we can hear the word of God uninterrupted and take it and do something with it, and go out. And then next week, hey, Johnny, hey, tag, you're it. Tag team, I got you. You go get what you need here. And you know what? I want, I want Pastor to give you everything. I want the Lord to give you everything. I don't want him to be limited in time because I'm too hurt on serving. Hey, tag, you're it. I got you. I got you. And if it runs a little long, that's all right because I know that they were getting what they needed. But if you're not tag, part of the tag team, you better get your butt in the game. Yeah. Otherwise, you shouldn't be sitting here. Because I'll tell you, it's, you it does you no good because you're not doing the word. You're just deceiving yourselves. You feel good about you. This is, I'm talking to us like adults. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So, praise the Lord. So this is where it all starts. Jesus, back, we look back... At Abraham and the, 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 the lamb that was provided, and Jesus now is that lamb that takes away as a, as a substitution. So that substitution says that all of your sin is on Christ. All of Christ's righteousness is on you. This is important for you and I to know. And this is why God's favor and face is turned towards you. And, and he really is. The, Jesus saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. The scriptures, where, the, where there is no shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness or, or remission of sin or payment for sin. Hebrews 9.22 and Leviticus 17.11. Now, Romans 5.17 says this, For if by, by the trespasses of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive the abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? How are you to reign? Through the one man, Jesus Christ. How are you to reign? Who's Jesus? You, you have God on your side. Why? Because the blood's been applied. I love what Brother Pastor Mark Hankins said. He, he had, had this little saying, uh, God is on my side because the blood has been applied. I will by, not be denied. Every need shall, need shall be supplied. Uh, so I enter into rest because I got God's best. I don't know. It was just something like that. It was this rhyme thing. He's probably more than that. I'm just saying, why? God's on my side because the blood's applied. So guess who I'm with? I'm with the one who can do the impossible. But do you believe that? Because if you don't, all you got to do is hear another promise. Well, show me there. And show me there. And, and show me there. So how do I pick the watermelon? Well, you can't just look at the leaves. you got to look at the vine. The vine will tell you. There's a tendril right next to the melon. You watch that one, but really watch back towards the, the stem. They'll begin to dry up. As it gets closer and closer, you'll see that they begin to dry up until it hits that melon. And don't just let that one dry up because you, you might be a little green. Wait till it goes past it. Then you'll notice also on the melon there'll be a little bit of a powdery blush, like almost like baby powder landed on it and got blown off. Pick the melon. Crack it open. As soon as you hit it with a knife, poof. How many of you know when you get the right melon, you hit that with the knife, pop? It's important, here's, here's what that took, somebody just teaching you, or just looking again. You know, here's the cool thing, is the Holy Spirit's your teacher. And every time you open the word, he's there to say, hey, look here, hey, look here, hey, look here. This is what's so cool. And this is why I say, Jesus said, it's better that I go away, because I'm going to give you this helper, this comforter to teach you. So, 
It all started here. What? A covenant-keeping God. So who is or what are the redemptive names of God? I want to show you these slides, and then we're going to hit this morning um, uh, Jehovah Rapha. And it's not remotely all-encompassing this morning. We're teaching on healing, and this is why I felt like it was okay for me to go back and lay a, more of a foundation for you and me. Because on Wednesday nights for the next couple months, we're teaching on the Lord is our healer. Divine healing. Not just natural healing. Thank God he made our bodies to heal. Thank God for that. God made that. But if he made our bodies to heal, surely he knows also how to heal. Okay, so here, let's just cruise through them. Go ahead, um, uh, lead, go ahead and lead me through. Jehovah Jireh, we talked about this. The Lord will provide. This is the verses. Next one. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner, the victory. Jehovah Shalom, you need some peace? This is what he said I'll be to you. Whew. Next one. Jehovah Ra, the Lord is my shepherd. This, is, this right here is about provision. And your health, your well-being, your reproduction. Think about this as a shepherd. Go, go, go look at Psalms 23 and who he is. He is your shepherd. He leads you where there's green, more than enough pastures. You know what's interesting? Like the sheep is on a pasture and they, eat, they can only eat so much. And that it's all around. But the comfort isn't in the grass. The comfort is in the one that's leading them to where the grass is. They're not thinking about, well, there be, is this grass going to run out? Because the shepherd always brings them to the place. This is why our trust can't be in the grass. Because what happens is, you'll find out, is it'll get hot sometimes. And that grass will dry up. And it'll go to winter. But the shepherd knows, and he sees winter coming. He knows where to lead his sheep in the winter. He knows where to... This is important. Next one. Jehovah Sitkanu, our righteousness. My, my righteousness is not in my works. It's in, it's in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Last one. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. That is the last one, right? Yeah. Um, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Ever-present help. You need help? I'll call upon the name of the Lord. Who? who the the covenant-keeping God whose face is turned and shining towards you and looking to be favor, show favor to you. Call upon him. But you gotta, you got to believe that. Because this is how anything, any promise of God and salvation is appropriated. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. All right? So let's talk about Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. The Lord who heals. Exodus chapter 15, 26. And this is his picture as being, the children of Israel are being brought out of the land. And their, their water is uh, bitter and they're complaining and, um, and the Lord, even in their complaining, <laughs> aren't you thankful that phew, he said, if you, Exodus 15, 26, he said, if you did, if you did, they were complaining about their water. They were complaining about where they were at. They were wanting to go back. And the Lord says to them, he said, if you'll diligently heed the voice of the Lord and do what's in right in, in his sight, give ear to his commandments, keep his statutes. I will put none of these diseases on you. Which you have brought you out, uh, which I have, which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals thee. This is this picture where the Lord heals these waters. He's also healing the people. Okay, and he says, but here's this this statement to the the children of Israel that's like you got to do this, 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 and absolutely, because they asked for that. Just tell us what to do, and we'll do it. They asked for that, and he said, you want you want me to tell you what to do so you can be. Blessed? Okay. Get your pen and paper. Because you won't be able to keep it. What you realize, the, the, the law was given to show, show you and me our need for a Savior. Yeah. So get your pen and paper. You, but he says, but if you'll listen and you'll do this, that you'll be blessed. And I'll be the Lord that heals you. Hmm. Well, anybody here miss it? Well, I guess, that, I guess you can't be healed now because you didn't listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, do what was right in his sight, give ear to his command, keep all of his statutes. I guess you're SOL. Sorry, out of luck. Good try. I guess I'm just going to have what life gives me. You know, my mom had this, they have this, and you know, 
It's the way it is. Hmm. Yeah, the Lord gives and the Lord take it away. Best to be the name of the Lord. Or we could look at where it all began and where it all ended with Jesus. Knowing and seeing that this passage right here was fulfilled in Jesus. The statement of your works where you and I, Galatians chapter 3, well, let's keep going here. So anyway, uh, we're going to get to that, and we're going we're gonna to show you that it's not on you, it's on him. But th- it can be taught, and if you don't understand the finished work of Jesus Christ, you can, you can look at even healing, you can look at different promises as we look who God reveals himself to be to the Old Testament. This is why every word that we talk about, the Lord who heals, you're going to see it in Jesus. Every one. Every one. You're going to see this, but as we look at these names of God, as he reveals himself, you're going to see every one of these names in Jesus. Okay? But if you and I only look to the Old Testament where he's revealing himself to the children of Israel, and we don't know that Jesus said while he was on the cross, it is finished, we will think we have more to do. Instead, we're of said of where you and I are to do what? Enter into rest. This is what faith, we and I are to rest in the promises of God and what Christ has done. Okay? Hang with me here if you can. I know it's 1130. Um, Praise the Lord. All right. So uh, let's let's jump here to, let's go to Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Mm, I really feel like I should go there first. Let's, Let's go Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. No, 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 let's not. We'll get there. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. 20 through 22, rather. We've, we've, if you've been here six months, you've heard this scripture eight times, okay? I've read this scripture. This is my first message ever to, as a youth pastor, this was my first sermon, 18 through 22. I've taught it. I know it. And yet there's more to it. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. You know what we're talking about right now? We're talking about the Lord who heals. Okay? He said, I will be the, I will be the Lord who heals. I am the Lord. I am the Lord who heals. He, sa- he tells us this. This is. He says... Um, that the, my words to you, they're life, but they're life only, only to a few. Who? Those that find them. You know how you find the words? You've got to be looking for them. Let's keep going here. Hebrews 10, 35 through 36. Don't, again, we're, we're, we're talking about why it's so important to find out what God's word says. And this is why we talked about the beginning of service, kind of got out of order on some of my notes, Mark chapter 4, that we got to hear the word. we got to recognize that Satan's after the word. And we got to know that life is found in the word. And so I should be looking for the word. Okay? Hebrews 10, 35 through 36. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere. So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. So I need perseverance. How does perseverance come? It doesn't come by us being try hard. It comes by us keeping a promise before us. Hebrews chapter 6, 11 through 12. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be realized. Did you know God doesn't want you hopeless? Did you know God doesn't want to have your, get, you know, let your hopes down or whatever you know? Uh, he, 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 he said he wants your hope to be realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherited what God had promised. He's saying, keep it before you. Keep it before you. Look for the word. Show me in the word. Show me in the word. When you're you're running out of patience and you're waiting for your steak and you're already eating your appetizers, your salad and your drinks, you ask the waiter. You ask the waitress, hey, did you turn it in? Yeah, I turned it in. It should be here any moment. Guess what? Your strength is renewed to wait a little longer. When you look in the word, this is so, it's so simple. 
You look in the Word and you see who God is. You look at it and you say, Holy Spirit, teach me, show me, bring to my remembrance all that you are. Comfort me. He doesn't just say, well, you know, tap you on the butt, get tough. No, he comes and brings the word to strengthen and encourage you. He brings us you the picture of the promise. Yes. Hebrews chapter 13, 5. So through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of the lips that openly profess his name. So here's the deal. If you and I know his name, what's his name? Jehovah, the covenant-keeping God, the Lord who heals thee. This is the, there's a fruit on your lips. When you openly profess Jehovah, the Lord who heals me, there's fruit of my lips. And you know what that is? Father, thank you for healing me. There's praise. So you got promise and you got praise. And that's what allows you to persevere. If you don't have a promise and you don't have praise, you're going to quit. But if you know his name, this is what it says. This is the fruit of the lips that openly profess his name. The Lord who heals me. The Lord who's my victory. The Lord who's my righteousness. The Lord who, what, what, who the Lord is. When you and I say, there'll be praise coming out of our mouth. Yeah. And you know what praise does? It brings strength to you and me. Yeah. Psalms 103. I love this. This is David. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost parts. Praise his holy name. He's the one who forgives, verse 3, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. So, this is, we're, gonna, we're getting to the kind of the wrap-up portion here today, okay? David is saying here, hey, bless the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, praise His holy name. And then he goes on in verse 3 and he says, he forgives all of my sins and he heals all of my diseases. Now, 1 Corinthians 14.8 says this. It says that when a trumpet gives a sound, this is talking about uh, praying in tongues and how we are to, to communicate in English or in a spoken language where people can understand, but I shouldn't just come to you speaking in tongues because that would be ignorant. Each sound should have a distinct sound. Here's what it says. Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will know to get ready for battle? Do -do 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 -do, right? I don't know. That was probably not. I felt like... Uh, that one guy, Napoleon, I think. No, not Napoleon. <laughs> do, 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 do. Help me out. Do, 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 do. Nacho. Nacho. Okay. Um, and here's the clear call, and here's the clear sound. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Um, there's a clear sound, and it's a clear sound that the gospel should, should sound. Okay? It's what David says. He said, thank you, praise be the Lord, who forgives my sins and heals my diseases. Okay? That's what he says. Isaiah 53 says that surely he has borne our... Go ahead and let's put it up here. Surely he has took our pain and bore our suffering. We considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. So this is Jesus being beaten, going to the cross. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace, peace with God, unit, union, wholeness again, back with him, was upon Jesus. And, somebody say, and... By his stripes we're healed. So David said, thank you, God. Praise God who forgives my sins and heals my diseases. Do, do, do. Bump, ba, ba. Dun, da, da. Like, it's not da. What's that horn? Yeah, come on. This, the gospel sound, the gospel trumpet, the good news is that sin and death entered and by, by one man, but by one man, life reigns through Jesus Christ. He paid the price. For what? For my sin and body. This is important. This is a clear sound. This is the gospel trumpet. 1 Peter 2.24 tells us this. He himself bore our what? So here it's really easy for you and I to receive that Jesus paid the price for your sins. But oftentimes it's not so easy to believe that he paid the price for your body. Or your mind. It was a complete work in salvation. He bore himself our sins on his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. And by his wounds, you have been healed. It, it, you'll, you'll find it all through. It's both. Give, give, give you a, let's, let's look here. Um, thank you, Lord. Uh, let's, let's look here. Um, ooh, let's look here. Matthew chapter 8, 17. Same, same thing. This was fulfilled 
was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illness and he bore our, our diseases. It's, it's part of the, the full deal. It's the and. It's the and. All right? So here we go. The body and the blood. We see this in Isaiah. We see that there's the body and the blood. Je- Jesus, the Jehovah, the Lord who heals thee. Exodus 15, 26. We, see, we saw again that I am the Lord who heals thee. How am I the Lord that heals you? Galatians 3.13. Remember, you had to keep all the works. You had to do everything just right. Galatians 3.13 says this. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Because there was a whole lot of law. There was a whole lot of curse, wasn't there? Yes. That you could... But by how? By becoming a a curse for us. This is the substitution. Who was your substitution? Jesus Christ was my substitution. So so for it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a pole. So the hanging on a pole, the hanging on the tree, the hanging on the cross is what allowed you and me to, to be redeemed from the curse. And that was one of the contingencies of you and me keeping up with that just to be healed. Now let's look at the, this last type and shadow in, in Numbers chapter 21, 4 through 9. And I'm going to read it. It says, They traveled from Mount Hor along the route of the Red Sea uh, to go up to Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread. There's no water. We detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we sinned when we spoke out against the Lord and against you. How many of you know that? That's pretty, pretty, like when you talk about God's people, you're talking against God. Whatever you've done to the least of me, you've done it to me. When you run your mouth and you talk and you back you, you at home with your, your spouse and you talk about John or you talk about your neighbor or you talk about your pastor or you talk about your coach or you talk about your whatever it might be, you know what you're doing? You're doing that to God. And you know what? There were snakes there. Anyway, I hate snakes. Um, he said, we sinned. We missed the mark. And that, you know, the key to getting back is recognize and call it what it is. I missed the mark. Um, and against you, pray the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it on a pole. Hmm. What was that? Um, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a pole. Hmm. The Lord tells Moses to make, a, make this a serpent, a bronze serpent uh, and snake and put it on a pole. And then when anyone was bitten by the snake, they, all they had to do is look at the bronze snake and they would be healed. Interesting. You look on the pole. So we looked at here that, that we needed to be, you either keep, it up, keep up to be healed or you need redemption to be healed. Redemption. Jesus was the substitute. He redeemed us from the curse of the law because curse is anyone who hangs on a tree. And yet then there's this other type and shadow or picture of, hey, make this and put it on a pole and anyone that looks on the pole, not upon themselves, looks on the pole, they'll be healed. Interesting. Now, I'm going to close with this. And if it ushers, if you'll get, your, get the stuff ready. Um, so when we look to the Lord, when we look for the healing because of the, the blood of Jesus... This is important to have the blood of Jesus, but it's equally as important to receive the body of Christ. Equally as important. So this morning, and I, I want to read this to you out of 1 Corinthians 11, and then we're going to um, receive communion, but you don't have to take the, the body if you don't want. I mean, I guess, maybe. I don't, I don't even think that that's possible. Can you receive communion? Without the body and the blood? Like, don't we have to believe that he died? And that he rose? It, it, this is important. And let me say, this is the gospel trumpet. And that I didn't read, and that's, uh, that's Luke chapter 4. This is, oh, that's where I, I knew I had skipped a huge portion. It's okay. Because I deleted it out. <laughs> Trying to add one scripture, I must have deleted the whole passage out. But Luke chapter 4, when Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to set the captive. He goes on to say, but he goes, and to announce or to proclaim the year of the Lord. 
In Leviticus, I think it's 25, 17. Let me, I, might, I don't know, I think I have it here. But he, he, here's what the deal is. When, the, when the, year of, the year of Jubilee, when Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim to you, to set captives free, to recover his blind sight, all this stuff that the God, he's like, I'm here, and, and I've been here for 30 years. Luke chapter 4, 17 through 19. And now I can do and bring about the will of God. He's like, this is so great. He's so excited, and I'm going to proclaim to you the year of Jubilee. This is what I'm going to proclaim. And in, in order for the year of Jubilee to be instituted, this is part of the law, all right, that there had to be a sacrifice in that year, even though it was already the year, they couldn't sound the trumpet for that year until atonement was made. So until atonement is made, there is actually no Jubilee or full, full restoration of everything back. This is why it's so important that, the, that Jesus paid the price, that he died. He had to be the substitute. Death had to happen. For what? For your body and for your salvation. Sins and diseases. You'll see it all through. Let's, let's, we're going to close with this. Here's what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23. This is Paul. He said, I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. And this is uh, this passage we often referred to when we receive communion. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. His body beaten for yours. His body, he said, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and said, this cup is a new co covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. It's a, it, this is so, so important for you and I to understand is this, that when we receive communion and what we, what we believe the gospel message is and how always has been a message of both the body and the blood. The body and the blood. And the body by his stripes for our healing. Not just in the one day eternal spiritual healing. If, if sin brought death, if sin brought sickness, if sin, if all those things are a result of, of Adam's sin, either Jesus was enough to bring back or he wasn't. Was he enough? Well, let me tell you, he is enough. But was he enough to you? What do you say? It matters who you call Jesus. If you want to know God's will, look at Jesus. You can't look through the Gospels and see that everywhere Jesus went, never one time when somebody desired to be healed did he deny them. Never one time. Never. So the clear gospel is that Jesus died for your sins, but he also died for your body, for your health. Spirit, soul, and body, you can have a sound mind instead of depressed. Why? Because he was beaten for you. This matters. Let's go ahead and pass up the elements. We'll stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you both. We got crackers this morning. Maybe we'll upgrade to full cups and bread and tables here soon. Why not? Why not just have pop blessing? And these youth over here are looking for the fullest cup. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we just say, teach us, Lord. Teach us. Show me. Remind me of what you said. My wife text um, this, me and the staff this week. Just yesterday, I uh, feel like it bears repeating right now. So many times in our lives, 
we have more faith in the way that God does something than we do in the Word of God. And so when we don't see it the way we thought He would, we lose confidence in Him. But our confidence was never in Him if that was the case. It was always in a certain way. Our confidence needs to be in the Word because when our confidence is in the Word, we're confidence is in the one who spoke it. The one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come. The one who is almighty, uh, the one who, uh, I mean, we're talking about the names of God. Let's put our, let's move ourselves back into that place where we're looking and we're looking and say, Lord, you said. He even tells us, put me in remembrance of my word. In order to do that, I got to know it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep waiting a little bit longer. You know, healing is, um, it's not a try thing. It's just a come under thing. It's a come under, the same way salvation is. So many times we think we got to clean, we, we, we have this idea that you got to clean yourself up to come. Or you got to wait long enough until you're not, feeling condemned or what and that's not the case at all it's you and I just coming under humbling ourselves coming under what God says and say Lord I say what you say I say what you say and you know what he said to us and this is what's so cool the last supper You know, sometimes it's just a blessing to see, ask the Lord to show us more than what we just see out of tradition. It's funny, I was moving this from here to there and it just spilt blood on, on my stuff. It was kind of cool. Just washing, you know, not just down the hatch. Just a different picture. But Jesus said something the last night as we, with his disciples. He took bread and he said that this is my body that's for you. So this is one of the places, this is the, whoa, whoa, hey. This is the place. See if we had a low, right? This is the place where he talks to us about healing in our bodies. As a matter of fact, if you were to keep reading in 1 Corinthians, he says there's many sick among us because we're not deciphering this even right. But he took the bread. He said, this is my body. And he broke it. It was beaten for you and me. And he said, you do this and remember me. So we're just, I'm not going to break it. I'm going to break it with my teeth. How about that? Thank you, Lord. Father, today we just ask you to show us. Show us in your word and we come under your word. And we say you are who you said you are. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us. You've not changed. And we receive it. If there's any place in our bodies right now that we need healing, we just receive it right now. Father, thank you for eczema going because of the work that you'd paid for on the cross. We thank you for minds being restored. We thank you for nerves giving the right signals. Father, we thank you for peace in the minds, healing of stomachs. <laughs> Restoration of blood. Immune systems. 
corrected and by you by your beating and we just say thank you for that thank you thank you for whatever you need healing for maybe it's your ankle maybe it's your shoulder just tell them thank you maybe your back is in your discs discs in your back we just say thank you today we say thank you now we give you praise for it it will be the fruit of our lips because we call you today Jehovah Rapha the Lord who heals that same night he took a cup and he said this is a the cup a new testament a new agreement that I'm going to make with you. It's going to be in my blood. This cup is the payment. This cup represents me paying for what you couldn't. And we receive it this morning. And Lord, we say thank you. You are Jehovah, Jireh, the Lord who provides where where we fall short. Father, in every way, Father, I thank you that today we'd be reminded of salvation and what salvation is, that we would leave this place and remember you have lifted up your countenance towards us. Your face is shining towards us. And you came to bring us peace. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. If you're here today, I know I should have maybe done this before, uh, receiving communion, but maybe you're here and you want to give your life to Jesus, and um, maybe you took communion, you said in your heart, you told the Lord, I, I want you today, you know, even while you were doing communion, you were like, I'm going to do this, but Lord, you know, you know what's going on, you know he's good like that, and the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'd be saved, and because uh, it is with a heart man believes, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, so if that's you and you just want to give your life to Jesus this morning, I'll just ask with the show of hand, lift your hand, want to give your, get, maybe come back to Jesus this morning. Maybe you've walked away. He hasn't walked away from you, but thank you, Lord. I know it's 12 o'clock. I've been here. Getting seeds planted in us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Landon, will you come? This morning we're dismissed. You know, you got to remember, go ahead and come. Um, Watermelons. Started out with watermelons. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll tend these seeds. And I do have a few extra seeds if you want them. So, All right. See you. Hey, um, we're going to pray here in a minute before we're dismissed. Pastor Nate and Evan, they're going to just be out by the door. Love to shake your hand and say goodbye to you on your way out. If you need prayer for anything, we'll have a few staff members up here, and we would love to agree with you in prayer. According to Matthew 18, 19, we believe what God's Word says. When we pray and agree together, God does what he said he would do. Amen. Hey, I want to remind you of one thing before we leave. I love what Pastor Nate did with the watermelon and the seeds this morning. You know, we love the fruit. We love the fruit. We love, we want healing. How many of you want to be healed? Anytime you have anything wrong with you, you want to be healed, whether you want to say it or not. But we often despise the seed. And we can't have one without the other. We have to have the seed. And it's very intentional that we're doing a series on healing for many Wednesdays now. So I want to encourage you, if maybe you don't come on Wednesdays regularly, if you need healing in your body, I don't see how you can not be here on Wednesday night if you truly want it. If you want healing in your body, come get the seed. Come and get the seed. Maybe you think, I'm good, I don't need healing in my body. Guess what? You have before, you probably will again. You need the seed right now. I want to encourage you to be here on Wednesday nights. Get this last one. Go listen to it. This is life-changing stuff. And it will, it will, it will bring healing in your body.